We are going to get started. I wanted to welcome everyone to the webinar. Uh, I am your moderator and host. My name is Dr. Lauren Levine. I know many of you know who I am because you've been on these webinars in the past. Uh, we had a great turnout as always, close to 900 people registered. As always, I, I start off by making sure that everyone is hopefully staying healthy and safe out there and kudos for continuing your dental education. Uh, certainly, you know, I think a lot of practices are pretty much back to normal or above normal from where we were a few years ago. So I'm really thrilled to, to hear that. I'm only going to speak for a few minutes. I want to make sure that Dr. Kaczynski can speak for as long as he needs. We want to leave time at the end for questions. Many of you have been on these webinars in the past. So you kind of know the format. Uh, Tim's going to speak for about an hour or so. We'll open it up. Uh, we're going to introduce our, our sponsor, Golden Dent, who will make a short presentation, off, make a special offer to you, and then we're going to open up to questions. We don't, you know, with close to 900 people, we, we obviously can't do verbal questions. On your screen, you have a GoToWebinar control box. You type in your questions as you think about them. I'm the only one that can see them, and I'll go through them. My job at the end is to try to get to as many questions as we can. When we have this many people, Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. I'm seeing the questions, as I said, I will try to maybe consolidate some of them and try to group some of them together. My goal is to get to as many as we possibly can. If I don't get to your individual question, then I apologize ahead of time. Uh, we do wanna make sure we're done uh, within 90 minutes. That's kind of our, our hard stop. In the next few days, look for a couple of things from us. You will get a link to uh, watch or download the recording. We record all the webinars. That usually goes out within a couple of days. So don't worry if you got to take a call or you know get distracted. You're not going to miss anything. You can always uh, download the recording. During the webinar, Dr. Kaczynski is going to be showing some of the products and systems that he uses, which are exclusive to Golden Dent. As always, I've had the pleasure of working with them for at least seven or eight years now. Um, these webinars don't happen on their own. Uh, thank you to Kurt and, and his team, and you'll get to meet uh, Kurt if you haven't already at the end of uh, Tim's presentation uh, then tonight. Um, they're the ones that bring in these great speakers like Dr. Kaczynski. Um, they're the ones that help develop the content. They also handle the CE. I get a lot of questions always during the webinar and after the webinar about CE. I'll try to mention it a couple of times uh, this evening. The basic rule of thumb is if you're here now and you're here at the end, you get the CE. There's nothing you need to do. I send them the list afterwards. It will show when you logged on, when you logged off. As long as you were here for the majority of the webinar, you'll be sent a CE. We do get some people who only show up for five or six minutes and then can't understand why they didn't get a CE form. Uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, AGD Pace, uh, they have really strict requirements about uh, who can get CE. So, um, but keep an eye on your inbox. That takes a little bit longer. Uh, they have to go through that whole list, like I said, and decide who gets it, uh, send out the forms. That usually takes about a week or so. By all means, feel free to shoot me a, an email within the next week or so. If you haven't got it, I'll follow up with them. They're always good about getting it out, but as I said, sometimes it may end up in your spam folder, your junk folder. So take a look at that as well to see if maybe it, it's there. So with that out of the way, um, I am thrilled to welcome back Tim Kaczynski. Uh, he has spoken many times on these webinars in the past. For those, those of you who don't know Tim, he's an affiliated adjunct clinical professor at University of Detroit Mercy School of Dentistry. He's on the editorial review board of Reality, which is the information source for aesthetic dentistry. He's the past editor of the Michigan Academy of General Dentistry. He's currently the editor of the AGD Journals, General Dentistry, and AGD Impact. He was named editor of Implants Today, which is uh, the implant publication the Dentistry Today does. He's a past president of the Mission Academy of General Dentistry. He got his uh, DDS from University of Detroit Mercy Dental School. He got a mastership in biochemistry from Wayne State University School of Medicine. He's a diplomat of the American Board of Oral Implantology and Implant Dentistry the ICOI, the American Society of Osteointegration. He's a fellow of the American Academy of Implant Dentistry and received his mastership in the Academy of General Dentistry. He's received many honors, in, including fellowship in the American and International College of Dentists and the Academy of Dentistry International. Uh, about six years ago, 2017, he received the Academy of Dentistry's International Humanitarian Award, which is for recognition of significant contributions to the enhancement of the quality of life and human condition. 
He's a member of OKU and the Pierre Fouchard Academy. Uh, he was the University of Detroit's Mercy School of Dentistry Alumni Association's Alumnus of the Year in 2009 uh, and 2014. And 2020, he received the Academy of General Dentistry's Lifelong Learning and Service Recognition. Uh, Tim has placed uh, over 16,000 dental implants. He's published uh, over 220 plus articles on surgical and prosthetic phases of implant dentistry. He was a contributor to the textbooks, principles and practices of implant dentistry. And another one that was done about 12, 13 years ago, uh, dental implantation and technology. So in other words, he kind of knows what he's talking about. And Tim, I hope I left some time for you to actually do the presentation because you had a long bio, but we're thrilled to have you back and looking forward to a nice presentation. You always crack me up, Lauren. Thank you so much. I really appreciate uh, the effort. We got a nice, nice big audience today. So uh, hopefully um, everybody out there will find this useful. You know, uh, we've done a lot of these programs, Lauren, uh, about grafting and, and um, osteogen and, and the golden dent materials. And um, I was asked to do something just a little bit different. Um, you know, you mentioned that, um, Lauren, you mentioned that, um, you know, dentistry is pretty much back to normal. And I think, I think a, lot of, a lot of the colleagues around the country um, um, are, are, are struggling a little bit. Um, I was with a good friend of mine, Roger Levin, um, who, who is a national consultant, and and uh, you know he he pretty much says on his his research with his people that general dentistry uh, has the potential to be down uh, significantly, maybe even up to 20% in the upcoming year, which is which is a lot. Which means that that as general dentists, and Lauren, you know, I'm a, I'm a general dentist that. Um, you know, it's important that we provide our patients with with really high quality dentistry um, at a fair price, but we also have to incorporate um, modern techniques. Um, you know, doing doing restorations, doing composites all day long is is bad on your back and bad on your neck, and 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 very challenging and not as financial rewarding as something we refer to as dental implants. You know, and Lauren, you, you know, I've been doing implants a long time since 1985, basically, and our modern implants were introduced in 1982. So uh, it's been a long time. Um, we've, we've placed a lot of implants, we've restored them, and it's, it's a really an honor for you to invite me and, and, and Kurt with Golden Dent to invite me to, to share some of my knowledge. But the point being that, you know, implant dentistry is, is the hot topic right now. Social media, TV, uh, our patients are coming to us. They're coming to you, doctors asking about dental implants and I'm a big believer in education and and building your your resume so to speak by by learning um, as much about this process as possible um, it's much more than just threading a, a spark plug into the jawbone um, and so there's a lot of planning that goes into it and that planning begins Lauren from communication with our patients uh, making them aware of what's available, educating and instructing them, not not selling so much, but but making them aware of what we are as general dentists are able to provide to them, and that includes extractions. And I know you know some of us. I'm I'm always a little bit amazed um, at our extraction courses because they fill up, and and I like to say that extractions are really challenging. They're hard. Um, they, they take a lot of effort and, and can do a lot of damage. And if you're considering dental implants in your practice, um, it's very important that we maintain as much of that hard tissue as possible. I like to say that bone is gold. And the more, the more we have, the better the end result uh, will occur. So I'm going to just demonstrate a few of my extraction techniques using um, the, the golden physics forceps. And I hope most of you, uh, again, the big audience today, um, are aware of it. And if you're not aware of it, you will be by the end of uh, the next hour or so. And uh, Kurt with Golden Dent will will have hopefully have some specials for you um, to get you involved because uh, it's it's a technique and a process that I personally would not practice without. Um, from extractions, we have socket sites, and we know what happens to um, to to bone when we remove teeth, right? The lower jaw, the bone shrinks down and in, and the upper jaw, the bone shrinks up and in, and uh, the tooth roots act like a tent pole holding up the, cir uh, the a circus tent, and if when we remove the posterior uh, maxillary teeth, the circus tent falls and the sinuses get large. So that's why many of us in general dentistry don't incorporate 
the surgical aspect of, of implant dentistry in their practices. And I think that's a mistake. I think there's a lot of really good programs out there. Um, Golden has, has a great uh, learning program, hands-on program on implant dentistry. But to begin, we have to extract. And if we're going to extract, we have to maintain the hard tissue or maintain the bone. And to do that, we're, we're gonna have to learn how to graft properly. And so I'm gonna show you a couple of techniques um, I like to say in my lectures, there's a hundred ways of doing what I do. I'm not going to show you a hundred ways of doing what I do. I'm going to show you what I do and what makes me very successful in my practice. So hopefully you can take a few gems, Lauren, you too, uh, and what we're able to do today to, to give us final restoration, aesthetics, um, um, smile design, emergence profile to maximize our results. So we're gonna learn just very briefly some of the atraumatic extraction techniques. This is a different program than I've done before. Um, we're gonna talk about grafting sockets or sockets where the facial wall is missing. And I like to say that I'm going to show you in this hour how to grow bone 100% of the time. And that's a very bold statement to make, but I'm gonna show you the techniques where you can maximize the result, a grow bone and prepare sites for your implant surgery, those that you elect to do, and to maximize the final aesthetics. And we'll talk about some single tooth replacements, um, maybe a little bit about full arch if we have time uh, at the very end of the program. So this is a, a friend of mine who came in um, uh, just recently and he had an old, looks like silver points or files, I don't know. And he had uh, discomfort um, the endodontist said that the tooth is, is not treatable and needed to be extracted. So he came in and uh, we evaluated the site and it was actually a fracture in the tooth. And you can kind of see it, uh, a vertical fracture right at the furcation line. Um, so we're going to take the tooth out. Now, I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with this. Um, it's called the WAM key. And uh, most of us take crowns off, right? We're gonna take a, a, a mandibular molar tooth out uh, two rooted molar, those are challenging to take out. Um, and one method is to uh, section the mesial and distal roots. Well, to get the crown off, most of us would take a burr, some type of a burr, and go from facial to occlusal to uh, lingual. And then, you know, you take some kind of instrument, a spreader, and you break it. Usually, the, uh, the uh, uh, one of the sites, usually the distal aspect comes off, the mesial aspect doesn't. And so we, we dig and we poke we eventually get it out. Well, this is a technique that, um, that came to me from Golden Dent, it's called the WAM key. And what I will simply do is I will make a window, an elliptical window in the facial aspect of the crown. Now I'm assuming something here because the radiograph won't tell me exactly where that preparation was made uh, because the x-ray won't go through the metal or through the zirconia. But I will make an elliptical window on the facial aspect in the occlusal third of the tooth, assuming that we have a preparation uh, in the occlusal third. And uh, this window uh, penetrates through the porcelain, here it was a PFM, through the, the metal uh, to the central groove area. And this instrument is called a WAM key. It's a set of three instruments. Kurt, I hope you're going to discuss it uh, at the end of the program. Uh, if not, uh, please um, uh, let him know, and I th think it's a very useful tool, especially doctors, especially with uh, zirconia or Bruxer crowns. You know how hard those are to remove. And if I can just make a little window in this in this crown, take this instrument that's a uh, heavy, uh, high grade steel with a little ball on it, and I'm able to, with the flick of my wrist, remove this crown. Now, in this tooth in particular, I'm going to remove the tooth. So, is that critical? No. But oftentimes we're re replacing uh, old crowns uh, with decay underneath it. And uh, we can remove this crown and we can even use this crown as a temporary. Your team members can just reline, can reline the, um, the existing crown uh, after the preparation. So I'm able to remove this crown in a matter of seconds uh, without spending a lot of money in uh, destroying burrs. Now, my extraction technique for a mandibular molar is usually quite clear. I will section those roots through the frication. Um, I want to remove the mesial root and distal root separately as if they were single rooted by cuspid teeth. So I'm simply taking a 557, a long surgical burr, and uh, dividing that tooth through the frication. Make sure you're all the way through the frication. 
Uh, I'm just making sure that there is separation there. And again, just using forceps from, uh, from Golden Dent, um, uh, great high quality materials. And I'm just making sure I have some movement. So I have basically two single rooted bicuspid teeth there uh, with, with um, some curvature in the roots, which can make the extraction, um, your conventional extractions very challenging. Now, oftentimes doctors, if we do our conventional techniques, we're using forceps, a cow horn of some sort, and we're squeezing hard and we're doing figure eights and buccal lingual, and we end up breaking the, the apices of that root in the jaw. And I know that for a fact because I see so many root tips left uh, in the jaw, which makes it very difficult for me as an implant person to place an implant because I have to go out, go back and remove that, those, those um, uh, apices of the root. So you must remove the entire, entire uh, root structure. And the physics forcep, quite free, um, simply, it's a very specialized instrument, four instruments, upper, upper right, upper anterior, upper left, and lower universal. It consists of two components, the beak, which is the shovel-shaped edge. That is the working end of the instrument, and it will engage this tooth one to three millimeters subgingival. You have to have a purchase point for this to work. The bumper, and here we have a little green silicone cap on it, is placed as far down the vestibule in this situation, if it was an upper tooth, as high up the vestibule as possible um, to create a pivot point or a center of rotation that allows us to create a little tension on the lingual aspect of this tooth. Now what's unique about, and I wish they didn't call it a forcep, what's unique about the physics forcep is there's no squeezing of the instrument. So there's no finger pressure, there's no forearm, there's no uh, bicep or shoulder pressure whatsoever. So if you have any manual dexterity problems with your hand, this is just a wonderful, wonderful instrument. And as I said, I can tell you, I would not practice without this instrument in, in, in my practice. Uh, I use it just about every day. So I'm engaging the beak on the lingual surface of this tooth, about one to three millimeters subgingival, placing the bumper into the vestibule and simply rotating my wrist constant pressure rotating my wrist in this situation towards the shoulder and in a matter of seconds matter of seconds this tooth will pop you're not going to hear it pop but it's going to release up and out of the socket the way it works is we are creating energy on the lingual surface of this root which is re re uh, resulting in a physiologic reaction of the body the body is releasing an enzyme which is breaking down the periodontal ligament and what's holding this root in place? The periodontal ligament, doctors. So uh, eliminating the periodontal ligament will allow this root to pop up and out of the socket. It's not intended to remove the tooth in total. Rather, it's intuitive, intended to luxate the tooth up and out of the socket in a matter of seconds, literally. I will then take a, a tooth delivery and remove those two roots. Now, always, always, always take a radiograph after you take a tooth out. We don't wanna leave root tips in place. So we have two sockets basically with, with some frication uh, bone in the center. We have maintained the interceptal bone, mesial and distal. Now that interceptal bone is very, very important to create emergence profile and smile design, even in a, basically a non-aesthetic area of the um, mandibular posterior region, but it's very important. Many of us, many of us, we are challenged by taking teeth out. We take that 557 burr and we trough around so that we can create a purchase point with our luxator or elevator. We're not doing that in this situation. I uh, made an incision through the frication and used the physic force, forcep to luxate. Now, grafting of this site is very critical in preparation for a dental implant. So here I'm using a product called Osteogen. Uh, it is sold by Golden Dent, and it comes in various sizes, a thin, a wide, an extra wide, it even comes in sheets. And it's a calcium appetite material in a bovine Achilles tendon matrix. This is not a collagen plug, doctors. This is actually a bone grafting material that's been around over 30 years. I've been using it for about 10 years and lecture on it extensively around the country. It is amazing. It's a very inexpensive material. 
uh, about $50, maybe less, if you can negotiate with Kurt later. And what's nice about it is you don't need a membrane. The bovine Achilles tendon matrix is such a consistency that the epithelium that would normally grow into a socket or into our allograft or um, uh, cadaver bone, uh, it, when it's not protected by a membrane, has two choices. It could try to fight through this bovine Achilles tendon matrix, or it could slide over the top. And my experience is we don't need a membrane with it. So it's a very inexpensive, true graft material that has a long track record. And I'm simply placing this firmly into the socket. I'm going to plug it uh, firmly, not crushing the material, but plugging it to about the crest or simply or, or slightly above the crest. The radiograph uh, uh, immediately post-operative shows that we have some radiolucency there. And what's nice about this material is, doctors, you can objectively evaluate the um, the uh, in uh, the uh, integration of this graft material into natural bone. Physiologically, bone is going to grow from the apex towards the crest. So over a period of time, I would give this three months, you're going to see more opacity at the apical portion, and we will continue to have bone growth. So after three months, I feel very comfortable placing an implant in this situation. I put some sutures. I will see the patient in a week to remove the sutures. I don't care about primary closure, doctor. I don't put any super glue or any kind of paste or putty. Epithelium is going to grow a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day. It's physiologic. Have the patient keep it clean, ice to the outside of the face, uh, warm saline if you want, nothing crunchy to eat, stay away from nacho chips, potato chips, anything that can poke it. So that, that's just a case that I did this week and I wanted to demonstrate how simple that is uh, and a financial rewarding to you. So let's look at a, a traumatic extraction in preparation for an implant. Again, a situation where we had a root canal treated tooth, we have a pretty serious uh, abscess on the facial aspect. The tooth is deemed non-restorable. Uh, don't we all love posts in dentistry? Um, I'm assuming we have a horizontal fracture right at the end of that post. Uh, it's not treatable. The tooth is going to be removed. So what I did was I will anesthetize the area. Now, I, I rarely block. I, I do infiltration and I will do PDLs with septicane, and that's more than enough for these situations. And here I'm taking a periotome, again, from Golden Den, a high-quality uh, product, and I'm, I'm just making sure that I have profound anesthesia. And this is the Golden Dent um, cow horn. It's a little bit different than a conventional cow horn. The, the uh, teeth on it are a little bit longer, and but the principles of extraction are exactly the same as I just um, discussed. I'm taking this, this forcep going into the furcation, and I will rotate my wrist towards the lingual, and I will hold for 10 seconds. You know, we count to 10 a lot as dentists. And what that's going to do is, again, it's going to create tension on that root structure, which is going to result in a physiologic release of an enzyme, which is going to break down the, the periodontal ligament. I will hold it for 10, then I will rotate my wrist. I don't have to squeeze really hard towards the facial, and I will hold till 10 again. I may have to do that a couple times. And when the PDL is broken through or destroyed, that tooth is going to be very, very easily uh, luxated out of the socket. Now, we have to evaluate that site. And again, I will use a golden dent curette uh, with serrated teeth on it. And you have to create these sockets. If you're doing grafting, doctors, you have to remove granulation tissue from the socket. So you have to feel comfortable scraping. You are not going to scrape bone away. You're going to scrape away any type of granulation. Purple blood is bad. Red blood is good. And you can see the tremendous large granulatomous mass that I remove from this socket. Again, take a radiograph and evaluate it. Now, this obviously is not an indication for an immediate implant because the socket is basically a cereal bowl. Uh, it, it's huge. So what happens um, uh, when we remove a tooth you know, and we get bone loss? We get decrease of width and height. We get um, um, denture patients when they wear dentures for a long time. 
um, can get dehiscence of the mental foramen and mental nerve, and we can get paresthesia. Obviously, our face, faces collapse. So, you know, it's very important that you educate and instruct your patients why grafting is important. If you do not graft these sites, bone is going to shrink, and I don't know how much. And they may shrink to a point where we are unable to place an implant without a much more invasive surgical, invasive and expensive surgical procedure. You all see that in your practices. We see that horses saddle in the posterior mandible. We're concerned about the mandibular nerve. We're concerned about the posterior maxilla where the sinuses collapse and we, we have no room, no vertical room to place an implant. So if we graft at the time of extraction, we can minimize bone loss. We uh, support the soft tissue. We help prevent periodontal pathology. We maintain the interceptal bone. And the literature will say we can provide an adequate site for implants in a short three to four months. And we can objectively evaluate it radiographically. Without grafting, we get soft tissue infiltration. Uh, we get loss of ridge height. And literature will say, we get a 30 to 60% bone loss in a very short amount of time, which means we might may need a more invasive grafting procedure in the future. Failures with our grafting. I mentioned when we first began that I'm gonna show you techniques in, in a very short amount of time, how to grow bone 100% of the time. Um, we have to learn how to suture correctly. You know, um, Lauren, we've done uh, grafting and suturing um, webinars very successfully in the past. Um, if you're using an allograft material, uh, cadaver bone, we must protect that graft from invagination of epithelium. So we must use a high quality resorbable membrane. If that membrane is dislodged or we don't use it, then the case becomes unpredictable. The membrane must protect the allograft for at least six weeks. I must have that membrane in for at least six weeks. Any shorter of that, and the case is unpredictable. And many of you, you know you, how you do, you do your extractions, you know you have to graft, but you've gone back and maybe attempted an implant and it's mush inside. And that's because we, we have an unpredictable situation. Or we could get an infection, failure to decontaminate. You must curette, 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 re eliminate that granulation. All skeletal bone demonstrate volume stability over time, except where we work, the dental alveolus because the dental alveolus is very labile in the absence of loading. What does that mean? We know when we have denture patients, oftentimes we have to reline their dentures over time. Why? Did the plastic change or did the underlying bone change? Well, we know the answer to that. There's a lot of grafting materials out there. Nearly 200 um, allograft is human bone. And I'm, the other material that we're gonna talk about that we just talked about is the osteogen. Uh, calcium apatite material. It is the same building block as natural bone, does not take a membrane, so it's a very cost-effective way of grafting um, four wall or sockets. Resorbable membranes, um, again from, from Golden Dent, we're using a resorbable membrane. It's a three to four month membrane. Remember, I only need it to last six weeks if I'm using an allograft. Um, and our allograft is cortical cancellous, very high quality osteoconductive uh, product. And again, I, I think Kurt will probably have some specials for you at the end of the program. Osteogen, as I said, is a calcium appetite in a bovine Achilles tendon matrix. It combines both the graft and the membrane. It makes a grafting so simple, especially when we have a true socket, uh, a waffle cone, so to speak. Um, and it doesn't need a membrane, so it's very cost effective. So let's look at this situation that we, we took that tooth out and I'm gonna reflect the tissue. Now doctors, it's very important that you feel comfortable reflecting tissue. If you can see something, you can fix it quite readily. So you can clearly see, I, I reflected the facial tissue. You can see the defect on the facial aspect. It was not from the extraction, Rather, it was from the infected site. Here I'm taking an osteogen plug, packing it firmly to the crest or slightly above the crest. I don't need primary closure. This lower um, right slide is, is pretty important. Number one, 
when I do my reflections, uh, try not to make vertical incisions into mucosal tissue. If you incise in the mucosal tissue, mucosal tissue, and most of us are trained that way in dental school, um, you're gonna lose control of the reflection or the flap. And number two, if you incise into mucosal tissue, you're gonna have prostaglandin and histamine release and the patients are going to be in pain. If you do not incise in the mucosa, our patients do not experience excessive discomfort, even following an extraction. I don't need primary closure because I need that band of attached gingiva to remain on the facial aspect of my implant. Epithelium, again, is gonna grow a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day, and we are going to get closure in a short amount of time. And remember, this was a big defect. So my suturing techniques, and I think we've demonstrated this uh, in past programs, you could probably refer back uh, to YouTube and some of the other programs. Um, I use a reverse cutting needle, and most of us um, learn to suture from facial to lingual in this situation. And the problem with that is if you did graft the site and you did put a membrane, and you understand you put a membrane on top of it, um, if you go from facial to lingual, oftentimes we will grab onto that membrane. And when the suture is removed by your team members, they will pull out that membrane. And again, making a concentric circle in our, our discussion, that membrane must be remain intact for at least six weeks to make this case predictable. So after three months, doctors, remember how big that defect was, you can see a change. I hope you can all see a change objectively. We will always see more opacity or more integration from the apical aspect of the socket than the coronal portion. But at three months, I'm ready to place an implant because I'm gonna allow this implant to heal or integrate for another three months anyways, and that bone is going to continue to turn over. So what a miracle product. So let's look at our CBCT. We draw out our nerve. We see the big defect that was created there with our extraction. Um, after a healing period, we measure. We see that this is definitely a candidate for a dental implant. We now have the ability to virtually place our implant and actually virtually design the final crown if we so desire. And again, you can see in the CBCT, we don't have complete integration, but more integration in the apical third uh, our initial stability with our implant is in the apical two millimeters of every implant system today. And we have the ability now to even design our final restoration prior to any surgical intervention. We have complete control. We are away from the mandibular canal and the mandibular nerve. We don't block this patient. So um, we're just infiltrating the soft tissue. Bone is not innervated. Bone has no pain receptors. Nerve run through bone. So the only thing that we really need to anesthetize is the soft tissue. So after three months, look at our soft tissue and how it healed. We are evaluating the band of attached gingiva on the facial aspect. And here I'm taking an Orban knife, again, from Golden Dent. Uh, this is a wonderful instrument. It's a sharp stainless steel blade uh, with a particular curvature on it. So it allows me to, to evaluate the, the surgical site. I'll make a crestal incision and I'll go around the tooth. Again, I am not making vertical incisions into mucosa. We're evaluating the hard tissue. And you can see after three months, doctors, three months, we have something that looks like bone. Now, um, when I talked about my reflections, I talk about an envelope reflection. So if you take a number 10 envelope, lift the flap and blow into it, I'm not making vertical incisions. If you do not make vertical incisions, your patients will not experience much discomfort because you don't get that histamine and prostaglandin release. I like to do a lot of histology or I do a lot of histology for teaching. And so I did a course sample. And remember, this was a big cereal bowl that we grafted with a, a material that costs us $50 with no membrane. We sutured it with a Vicro. Now I did a core sample and I'm not gonna go into the histology, we don't really have time, but when you see magenta on the lower right part of your screen, that is natural bone. The uh, violet color is the graft material. And over time, we are going to get more 
uh, integration of that graft to form complete bone may take up to a year to do that. And you can see at the apical third, we have more bone than at the uh, crustal area. We then go through the process, uh, the implant uh, process that you have. And I know that, that Kurt with Golden uh, has an implant system. Every system is pretty much the same. You have a pilot, uh, wide drill, wide drill. This is not really an implant training program, but what we're going to simply do is make our osteotomy and we're going to widen that osteotomy to uh, the width of the implant we wanna use should be about half the diameter mesial distal of the tooth we want to replace, if that's possible, facial lingually. We then take our implant and we thread it into place. And again, remember our initial stability is in the apical two millimeters. So in three months in that incredibly big socket that we grafted, three months later, I placed an implant predictably and was able to torque it to 45 Newton centimeters. My initial stability, again, coming from the apical two millimeters. I'm going to allow this implant to integrate for another three months before I restore it. Because I was able to, to torque that implant beyond, uh, beyond 25 Newton centimeters, I'm putting a healing abutment. A healing abutment is simply a longer screw that will be placed into the implant that penetrates through the soft tissue, which eliminates the need for uncovering uh, and any anesthesia in the future. So we torque that healing abutment to 25 Newton centimeters, and we will suture respecting the uh, band of attached gingiva on the facial aspect. Again, I will see this patient in another week to remove those sutures, and I can evaluate the placement of the implant in an ideal position, thinking tooth first, thinking emergence of that tooth from that socket site. Three months afterwards, we remove the healing abutment and look at the periodontal health. Lauren, you're a periodontist. You can appreciate the health and stability. We are going to have an ideal situation. And doctors, I strongly recommend that you train yourself to become proficient and efficient in doing these surgical procedures. Um, these are procedures that are the most financially rewarding thing you can do in dentistry and something that you are certainly capable with proper education. We then uh, will torque uh, the implant into place. This is a, 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 a seating jig. We torque it to 35 Newton centimeters. This happens to be a screw retained prosthesis. We cover it over with uh, a composite uh, restoration, a little uh, a Teflon or, or um, a plumber's tape and a little composite. And we have form and function for this patient and longevity. And again, if we look from transition, we removed this tooth, we had a socket, we grafted, we virtually placed the implant before any surgical intervention. This is the transition of our actual implant, good facial and mesial, uh, facial and lingual bone, where the mandibular nerve is, where the canal is, Staying away from that, creating emergence profile, form and function for our patients. Not magic doctors, it's a recipe for success. And we are going to teach you how to grow bone and how to maximize your results. This is exciting dentistry that I hope all of you will, will appreciate um, and come to our courses. Um, Dental and uh, both dental and gingival aesthetics act together to provide a smile with harmony and balance. A defect in the surrounding tissue can be compensated by the quality of the of the dental restoration. What does that mean? If we have if we have a, a, a edentulous space, if we don't have interceptal bone, Lauren, you'll agree, we can't have interdental papilla. We must have to have interdental papilla. We must have interceptal bone. So removing that bone by troughing it is damaging your final aesthetics. But we can fix that, right, by doing veneers or adjacent crowns and things like that for the patient. But I just need you to think ahead. Think tooth first, doctors. Placing the implant is not the hardest part of this situation. It's creating aesthetics and a happy patient. So where do you ultimately wanna place the implant? I need at least minimally a millimeter of, of facial and lingual bone um, uh, 
facial and palatal bone, I'd like to have two millimeters. Um, the implant can be no closer than two millimeters from a natural PDL. And if you have implants adjacent to each other, they must be at least three millimeters apart because there's no natural blood supply like a PDL. Um, the papilla level is based on interceptal bone. And uh, that bone level is most, most important in creating emergence profile. The peri-implant bone remodeling occurs uh, both vertically and horizontally once the implant is exposed to the open environment. Many of you have seen implants that are buried, everything looks good. You do the final crown, the patient comes back for a hygiene visit and you've lost some bone. Well, we normally physiologically expect up to a millimeter of, of bone the first year. And the bone remodeling occurs to accommodate uh, for biologic width. Now, we don't have biologic width around implants uh, because there's no periodontal ligament. So the biologic width is created by the, the abutment implant interface. And most of our implants today on the market um, have internal connections. We call that platform switching. Again, that's a whole nother lecture that we'll get into another, another time. Contact dimensions are important. This is all in the literature, understanding, working with lab technicians that understand contact dimensions to create uh, interdental papilla and to respect interceptal bone. Here's a, a patient that was traumatized, was, was very, very anxious, had lost her teeth at a very young age, would not function on those front teeth, they were mobile. And you can clearly see, doctors, there is no interceptal bone to speak of. Um, and so we can't expect to have interdental papilla to any great respect. CBCT analysis indicates the tremendous amount of bone loss and um, either infection or apicose around the, the left central incisor area. We can see that the facial plate is very, very thin uh, in this area. So we can virtually remove those teeth using our CBCT analysis. We can virtually place our implants so we will know what size, type, shape, and position of those implants. And we can design the final aesthetic restorations. And you can see oftentimes our contact points may have to be a little bit wider or longer to accommodate that loss of interceptal bone. But we can understand all of this before we ever touch the patient. So we have these crowns that are mobile. We're going to anesthetize. We're going to evaluate using our periotomes, making sure we have anesthesia. And I love my physics forceps. I'm engaging the beak on the palatal aspect of the tooth, placing the bumper as high up the vestibule as possible, and simply rotating my wrist towards the nose. Constant pressure. Um, there's no, 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 I'm not squeezing, there's no forearm, no wrist, no bicep, no shoulder pressure whatsoever. You can see I'm simply rotating my wrist and really I'm putting tension with my middle finger there. The tooth will pop. We will then take a tooth delivery instrument to remove the teeth and you can see the tremendous trauma that was created uh, by this avulsed tooth that was, was traumatized early in the patient's life. So we're evaluating the site. Doctors, what are we gonna do next? We're gonna curette, curette, curette. We're gonna radiographically evaluate the sockets. I'm taking my Orban knife and I want to see the defect. But again, I'm doing my envelope reflection. I'm not making vertical incisions. I'm not cutting into mucosa. Going around the teeth and I can see not so much a defect on the maxillary right central incisor, but a considerable facial defect on the, on the maxillary uh, left central incisor. Removing the granulation, curette, 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 evaluate the site. Now in this situation, I'm using allograft um, from, from Golden Dent. Our um, cortical cancellous blend, 250 to 1,000 microns. I will wet it with sterile water, sterile saline. Doctors, never wet your allograft with anesthetic. Anesthetic has pH two and it will inhibit integration or slow it down. So, so sterile water, sterile saline 
it will form a gel. I then use a, a resorbable membrane, again, from, from Golden Dent. I'm cutting it to shape. This membrane must be placed passively. It must be placed at least two millimeters beyond any defect, and it must extend onto the palatal. That membrane must remain intact for at least six weeks for this to become predictable. So again, our implant um, a protocol, regardless of the system you're using, uh, one drill, uh, skinny drill, wider drill, wider drill, to get the implant to the position you want. In an immediate extraction site, another rule is I will place my implant one millimeter subcrestal in an immediate extraction site because we expect physiologically to, there to be some bone loss. I'm widening the osteotomy, widening the osteotomy, placing my implant, torquing it into position. I get my stability from the apical uh, two millimeters. Place my second implant. I'm gonna put cover screws. I'm gonna bury this, um, these implants because of the defect. Now you can see we have a facial defect uh, on the left maxillary central incisor. So we're going to graft, but first I'm gonna use my membrane. It becomes my new wall. It's passively placed, no hands. I'm not forcing it, I'm not tugging it. I have complete control of it. I'm taking my wetted allograft material and I'm repairing the defect on the facial aspect. Doctors doing this predictably, laying that membrane passively onto the palatal, suturing a la the technique that we demonstrated earlier from crest to facial, crest to, to palatal. Close those sites. I don't care about primary closure necessarily. We have attached gingiva on the facial aspect. Here the patient wore a flipper appliance for about uh, four months in the maxilla. I uncovered those implants. I put healing abutments. We allow the tissue to heal. And again, Lauren, I think you'd be very proud of the periodontal health. This is routine dentistry, doctors, routine dentistry. Certainly something you're able to, to manage, understanding the rules and principles through proper training before and after. Again, we don't really have an interdental papilla. Um, but we try to manage it the best we could uh, with, with what we had to work with. The patient was actually thrilled. I probably would have liked to redone these a little bit, uh, but the patient was, was thrilled and was, was functioning quite, quite well. In the transition again, we can extract the teeth, we can virtually place our implants, we can virtually design our final restorations, we can educate the patient, instruct the patient, make them aware of what's available. These procedures look traumatic, but they really aren't. Our patients will take 600 milligrams of ibuprofen, ibuprofen three times a day for three days. If there's an infection, amoxicillin, 500 milligrams, three times a day for three days is my protocol. So we virtually design it and we can show the transition of post-operative CBCT where we actually place the implant and the restorations exciting dentistry. We can evaluate the position of those implants. Very important doctors, I want you to look at these slides. I know I'm going really fast because we don't have a lot of time together. We did not place the implants into the sockets. There was no facial plate on the maxillary left central incisor. We placed our membrane, our long-term membrane. We placed our graft, built that facial wall, agreed tucked it, tucked the membrane onto the palatal, sutured, allowed it to heal, placed our implants, allowed the implants to heal. Look at the facial plate, doctors. We grew a facial wall. Doctors, using this technique, we can grow bone 100% of the time. Our position of the implant, as I mentioned, is not in the socket because we had no facial plate. Rather, we're three millimeters palatal to the facial aspect of the adjacent teeth, and we're engaging a little bit of the palatal wall and engaging the, the um, healthy bone in the apex of that um, edentulous space. Our initial stability is in the apical two millimeters of a socket. Last case, Lauren, um, we have 
uh, a case that obviously we have a tremendous periodontal issues. We're going to remove these teeth atraumatically using the physics forceps. In this situation, we are going to um, contour the, the um, diseased bone. We placed our implants, five in the upper, six in the lower. We had a little bit of a, a facial defect um, in the upper left side where I could not put an implant immediately. And we go through the process. Um, many of us would immediately load. This was a case that we could not get torque with the implant, so we, we waited. We then go through the process of wax try-ins, stable wax try-ins. We will then take final impressions. Many of you have done this. These are impression jigs that are individually uh, cut. We will loot them together and take a final analog impression. We have a multi-unit abutments which angle our access holes onto the occlusal or, or palatal or lingual surfaces of our uh, restorations. Here are our, um, our impression jigs that we loot together and we take our final impression. This is very precise. The prosthesis will passively fit. These are comfort caps on our multi-units. When multi-units are placed, we do not um, remove them. We evaluate the band of attached gingiva on the facial aspect of the implants. We then make provisionals. After we do the wax try-in, these are uh, PMMAs, um, uh, acrylic transitionals that the patient, we will evaluate aesthetics. We can make changes. We can uh, ev evaluate a speech. Uh, it's a pretty good um, final determination of what we will end up with. Um, oftentimes we'll do this a couple times to maximize the final aesthetics and meet the patient's expectations. And then we will finalize the situation with our final screw retain zirconia or Bruxer prosthesis. And we are changing people's lives. Doctors, you are changing people's lives with, with this very innovative dental techniques. When I started, Lauren, when I started doing implants, uh, implant dentistry was considered experimental. There were very few people uh, around the country doing it, relatively speaking. Um, I was trained to virtual, uh, visualize the case finished before you ever start. Well, that's an art that probably took 10 years for me to master. In today's technology with CBCT analysis, virtual design, scanning, and, and the uh, milling, CAD CAM design and milling and printing that we're able to do today, uh, it's amazing. And we are all basically equals today. If you take the time to educate yourself and use these tools, to a high level, you can achieve this exact same results that I achieve every day in my practice. And we have a pretty, pretty darn happy patient, a young, a young man who um, obviously had a lot of dentistry done, but again, we're able to, to provide him uh, an amazing service. He's, he's come back a few times now for his hygiene and uh, just amazing, amazing technology and our final restorations after about a year. Uh, one final one. Um, this is an interesting case. I may have showed this in a, in a previous, but this patient presented with a pretty big defect. And you can actually see the Schneiderian membrane. Um, and many of us may not want to do this, but what I did was I, um, I'm, I'm going to do this kind of quickly. Um, we, we took our osteogen plug and I kind of very, very carefully kind of lifted the Schneiderian membrane up. We still had a pretty big defect there. So I took my allograft um, from Golden Den, packed it. Now, what do we have to do now? If we're using an allograft, what do we have to do? We must protect it with a high quality resorbable membrane. It must be passively placed, sutured, and evaluated with CBCT analysis. So we lifted that sinus backwards and we filled that entire defect. This is what it looks like after a week. I don't expect complete closure, but epithelium again is gonna grow um, a half a millimeter to a millimeter a day. 
three months post-op, you can actually objectively evaluate the integration of the bone. We can actually see, I do my CBCT measuring. Is this a case that we wanna do an implant? Let me make my incision and let me show you doctors what we have there. It's not magic, it's a recipe for success that all of us can do, but no shortcuts, just follow the rules and you too can grow bone. Again, we're gonna go through the process of placing implants. I don't wanna take a lot of time with this. We can do that at another implant course if you wanted to learn. But we're going to place our implants strategically, place our second implant, place our second implant, bury it, evaluate it, suture it, and look at the uh, post-operative CBCT analysis. And we are just amazing. My last patient here, life-changing, life-changing for these patients. Teeth that are non-restorable, we do guided surgery today. This is not a guided surgery program. Um, uh, the, the, our surgical guides are, are constantly progressing um, in today's environment. We're going to remove two teeth atraumatically. We're going to do, do bone reduction to do, remove the diseased bone and create a site that we are able to create form and function for these patients at a level that we've never been able to achieve before. We take our final impression, analog impressions, and, and patients can wear their dentures. We, we don't normally immediately load them, but you can. We do our provisionals, as I demonstrated before, evaluate, and then we do our final prostheses for our patient. Absolutely life-changing for our patients. So that's all I wanted to show. Um, I think we're pretty much a little bit ahead of schedule, Lauren, but I know that you're gonna have questions and I know Kurt, Kurt, well, I hope he has some specials for his instruments, his grafting, his membranes, his, uh, the WAM key and the physics forceps, of course. And they also have a great motor that we started using uh, that, that's, that's really inexpensive and it's really high quality. So um, I'm, I'm really enjoying, we have about six different motors in our operatories and I'm really enjoying the motor. Maybe you can explain that a little bit too, Kurt. So I'm gonna turn the, uh, the screen over to Kurt. Um, I would certainly mention, and I think I mentioned this at the beginning as well, is that these webinars do not create themselves. Uh, we, we need the help of other people uh, to, to sponsor this, to get the speakers, to handle the CE. Um, as a reminder for those of you who may have shown up a little bit late is that um, the webinar is recorded so you will get a copy of that recording sometime in the next couple of days if you've made it this far and you didn't just show up five minutes ago you will get ce uh, sent as well that's all done automatically there's no registration or test or anything like that um, so i wanted to introduce kurt lawler from golden dent who's going to offer some specials if you're thinking about getting the, you know, some of their instruments, some of the supplies that they mentioned to tonight, uh, he's gonna give you a code and this is you know, the best pricing you're gonna get. This is better than CDA pricing. It's, it's better than Hinman. It's, it's better than what he sells it to his mother. So uh, pay attention and, and Kurt, take it away. All right, thank, thanks, Lauren, I appreciate it. Uh, hello, everybody, good evening uh, from Detroit. Uh, this is uh, Kurt Lawler and I am with uh, Golden Dent. Uh, for anyone that's not familiar with Golden Dent, we're uh, Detroit-based uh, dental company. Um, we also have uh, a lot of educational programs, and so we uh, try to mix the uh, educational components with unique, unconventional uh, products that we offer. I'm going to go through just a few slides here quickly, um, and I'll, I'll mention this, I guess, right away before I get into some of these uh, slides on some of the products that we offer here at our company, Golden Dent. Um, we're doing a 15% off uh, coupon code this evening. For those that joined the webinars in the past, you're, you're familiar with this. We usually provide some sort of a special like this, and uh, we do the specials just for uh, 24 hours. And so the code tonight is uh, WEB11, and that's for 15% off. And that's uh, golden-dent.com. So don't, don't forget the dash there. Uh, if you wanted to see any products that were mentioned this evening or uh, maybe you're a regular customer already, just a good opportunity to save uh, save a little money in your next order. 
uh, like I said, uh, expires tomorrow, uh, the, the 12th, uh, 24-hour deal here for the webinars. So uh, extractions and grafting is uh, what we covered uh, mainly this evening here. So you can see on the, in the right there, that's our graph kit that we worked with uh, Dr. Uh, Tim Kaczynski to design. It's a really simple uh, kit. Uh, it's nice looking, inexpensive, has a graft uh, cassette uh, to hold all your instruments together there for your grafting procedures. Uh, the physics forceps there, that's what's in the middle there with the green and the um, yellow bumper. I'll explain that uh, here in a second. And then we obviously have uh, a full allograft and sutures and anything related to uh, extractions and grafting. So for uh, implants, uh, we have our uh, surgical motor. Um, we have all of the woodpecker products. So this is uh, their latest uh, surgical or implant motor. Uh, we've been very happy with it. We use it in our uh, live patient programs and our educational programs. Um, so far, we've been very, very happy with it. We also have the penguin and the spotter. So the spotter there on the left is for uh, identifying uh, or I guess locating uh, submerged or buried implants below the gum, gum line. It's basically a metal detector for dental implants. Um, that's one of the unique products we have for implants. And then the penguin's been around for a while. That's a, a good device to uh, easily uh, identify the stability of the implant. I'm gonna mention just a couple other things. These are a little off topic, but we have a full endo line now. So we have all of the uh, woodpecker endo motors. Uh, they do have the reciprocating mode. Uh, so it works for all the popular file systems out there. Um, we have obturation systems, files, apex locators. The other part of our business is our restorative. So uh, I know we showed the, the WAM key this evening, which is our crown remover. Uh, we also have a sectional matrix system and then our curing light is a very uh, popular uh, light for us. It's inexpensive. It's a wide spectrum uh, LED curing light. So I wanted to mention this just in case um, anybody hasn't joined a webinar lately or isn't getting our regular emails. We just added um, about 250 to 300 uh, ultrasonic scaling tips. Um, so if you're looking for an alternative to maybe uh, some other the popular brands, we have compatible tips. Uh, that come in a the kit there that you see in the top right and those will work with all of the uh, top brands that, that you've heard of such as like EMS or uh, Mectron and things like that. So back on topic I guess here we have uh, like I said one stop uh, stop for extractions we have the physics forceps this is the product that was our first product based on um, the, the dental business aspect of what we've done here and so this is the standard series set of instruments. This is our most popular set. There's one lower instrument and three uppers. Uh, the technique was explained in, in detail throughout the webinar this evening, so I won't uh, mention this too much further, but this is the set that I would definitely recommend um, if anybody's looking at the physics forceps, you have 30 days to, to try them in your own hands, um, use them on as many cases as, as you like to make sure they're a right fit for you. And these are the ones that are going to be the easiest to use. It's called the standard series, the, the four with the green bumpers. So if you're looking for just conventional instruments, we have those too. A lot of people asked us, hey, can you make a, a really nice ash or a 150 or 151? Uh, we have these available also. So as a pre-step, uh, you can use really you know, any type of elevator instrument. Uh, I, I think the one Dr. Kosinski likes the most is the, the one on the bottom right there, the bayonet. Uh, type instrument or any type of luxator. This is a great pre-step to, to using the uh, prior to using the physics forceps. It'll obviously just make the uh, extraction that much easier. It's, it's not necessary because the physics forceps really is the elevator, uh, but it's something that obviously can help in the procedure. This is our uh, granulation um, shaping or degranulation burr kit. So if you can't uh, manually cure at the socket. I know we talked about that uh, in pretty good detail this evening. Those top two burrs are really good for uh, degranulation. Uh, it allows you to just get, get in some of the spaces that maybe you can't uh, manually cure at with uh, the crat that I'll show here next. So this is the manual cure at, and then the alternative would be the one I just showed here on the top right, which is the tissue and degranulation burrs. Uh, and then these obviously have your bone leveling burrs, which we showed in the last case for uh, when you need to level the bone with a straight nose cone and then a good cutting and a shaping burr. 
This is the graph kit I just mentioned, Osteogen plugs. We covered this in detail, excellent product. The one with the star above it there, the large size is the most popular. You can always cut it to shape. So I would recommend if you've never used the product, uh, you start with the large. Um, they come in a five pack or uh, a 10 pack. This is our allograph. So there's a lot of allograph out there, um, like Dr. Krasinski mentioned. Uh, we've had great feedback on ours. Obviously, the all allografts out there are, you know, reputable um, tissue banks, and they come from proper sources. But uh, this one's a fair price, a good quality product, and it's the um, mineralized cortical cancellous mix, which our uh, class instructors uh, prefer. So for membranes, uh, we have a few different options here. EpiGuide is, is a good membrane. It's one of our uh, more popular membranes. Uh, you also have the, the coliform or the, uh, the osteoflex membrane. They're all la long lasting membranes. Um, it's really just a preference thing from a handling perspective, but they're all gonna be, uh, they're all gonna stay around for the required uh, six weeks that was mentioned this evening. So sutures, we, we have our own PGA and, and a black silk suture. These are um, very affordable. If you're using another PGA type suture, I definitely recommend taking a look at those. I'm gonna skip over that. And then I'm just gonna mention our education programs real quick before I turn it over to the uh, Q&A session. Uh, we do uh, hands-on programs. We started with extractions, then we do extractions and grafting. Um, and then we even have a more advanced type of uh, extractions and grafting program. Uh, you can learn more about these at AmplifiedDental.com. That's our uh, educational <coughs> website, um, which is separate from the product-based business. Uh, we have a couple, I uh, can't see the dates here, but the, the dates are, um, here's a couple upcoming dates, I guess. One of them's, uh, I think AMP2 might be full for, for next weekend, but we have um, uh, our next extraction class, AMP1, coming up soon. And then we have our uh, guided full arch uh, implant class uh, coming up also looks like here pretty quickly in a couple couple weeks. So that's it. I'll leave this up and turn it back to uh, Lauren for the questions. And I appreciate everybody's time this evening. Um, you can give us a call in the office. We're very knowledgeable about all of our, our products. We can help you out with any questions you have. Our website's there for the products and the educational uh, component, which is Amplify Dental. And uh, uh, like I said, use the code if you want to. Uh, save a few bucks or uh, just kind of continue to stay tuned with what we do here at Golden Dent and um, look for future webinars in the future. I appreciate it. I'll turn it back to Lauren. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Kurt. And, and that code, that's good for all of, uh, other than the things that you put at the bottom, that's excluded. That's good for all Golden Dent products, even the ones that weren't necessarily talked about during the uh, the webinar, correct? That is correct. Got it. Okay, Tim, you ready? I'm always ready for you, Lauren. Okay, well, we got a bunch. Um, so as a reminder, I'm gonna to try to get to as many questions as we can. Um, the green bumper on the physics forceps, uh, reusable, do you toss them? How do you handle those? They're, they're very inexpensive. They're one-time use. Got it. What about um, like guide trays? You, you know, how often do you use them, if at all? Uh, you know, what situations do you use them in? You know, that's a really fair question. You have to remember, I've been doing this for 37 years. Um, so a guided surgery is a very important part of dentistry today, but it's not a panacea. Um, I think the doctors, I'm really big on education, Lauren. I think the doctors still know, need, to, need to know how to do implant surgery two-dimensionally because sometimes the guides aren't exactly where you want it. So what I want to leave people with here is to know how to reflect, know how to anesthetize, know how to reflect to protect the tissue, respect attached gingiva, see, see the available bone, we can grow bone. A guide is, is, is a tool. It, 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 it makes you more comfortable uh, than, than fine. Uh, it adds costs to it. Um, it's not just a suck down. A guide is not a suck down. It's very precise um, and engineered very, very, very uh, specifically. So um, just respect the hard tissue, respect the bone. Um, and if if you feel you need the tools, we, we have the tools available to make you more proficient and efficient. But it's not a godsend. For, for It's not just an end all for everything. Right. Okay. What about um, it looked like in one of the cases that you showed, I think it was the anterior, you used an allograft 
um, but you had used that OsteoGen plug um, in the posterior. Is there a specific reason or uh, rationale that what you would use one versus another when it comes to these graft grafting yeah. sites? And again, great question. Uh, my rule of thumb, and you know what I'm trying to teach here, Lauren, you know, we had an hour together, is I don't want to exaggerate our abilities, uh, what we can and can't do. Um, what, what, I, what I would suggest is that, that we have a socket with all the walls intact, all walls are intact, then the osteogen is, is just, it's a very cost-effective, routine, easy thing for you to do um, for your patients to maintain hard tissue. If uh, we have a facial defect greater than five millimeters, then I suggest that what I would use is an, a high quality allograft material with a high quality membrane to protect it. I want predictability. We're doing research now, you know, and obviously I can stretch my abilities to a different degree, but um, for those who are just using them, these materials, that, that's pretty much my rule. All the walls intact, osteogen is great. If a facial defect is greater than five millimeters, allograft, place the membrane at least two millimeters beyond, make sure it's passive, make sure it stays in there for at least six weeks. Okay. The, um, that full case that you showed, how did you uh, provisionalize that? I assume it wasn't block temps like I did in dental school. Um, uh, the, the, we provisionalized with, 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 in these, both of those cases were with dentures, immediate dentures. Okay. Um, do you use osteogen as a, as a quote unquote membrane against the sinus? Uh, and they're saying that they love the osteogen materials. However, I've entered after extractions and healing and the site has been uh, mushy, I guess. Well, that, that's technique, Lauren. And again, um, you know, I think doing a hands-on program, um, I, I'm, I'm gonna say this and I have to be politically correct. You know, as general dentists, we have a tendency to be frugal. How, is that a good word? And the, the membrane has to be placed firmly. It has to be placed to the, the crest or slightly above the crest. And oftentimes you will get excessive blood and you, you need to squeeze it, squeeze the ex excessive blood out of it and it won't be mushy. But sometimes we need more than one plug for a certain site. Um, and you just have to bite the bullet and open another one and have enough material there. Okay. I've um, got a few questions here about that that full arch restoration, about, uh, well, how do you maintain that? Uh, is, is food impaction a problem? So how do you, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, when we're using the zirconia, the Bruxer, the plaque does not stick to it. It, it does not, it, nothing sticks to it. So we will, it's specifically made, um, it rests on the tissue, but it's not, it's not a, um, uh, it's not a, uh, uh, concave on the tissue. So a water pick, we, we have the patients, what I tell, I don't sell water picks in my office because they break and then patients bring it back to me. I tell them to go to Costco and, you know, get last year's generation of water pick and that works really well. Keep it on low and that will keep it clean. Obviously, we'll see the patient uh, at least once a year, uh, more if, if they have, um, you know, maintenance problems. Um, if you have to, you can remove um, the bridge to clean underneath it. But it's not like the old hybrids, the old acrylic ones where we got tartar buildup or calculus buildup. We're not seeing anything stick to this. Okay. And again, but you know, Lauren, the important thing in, as a periodontist, you can appreciate it. It's the surgical procedure is very important. You have to have attached gingiva on the facial aspect of all your implants. And, and that helps in the periodontal maintenance long term. And that's right. something that is, I think is lost by general dentists oftentimes. Okay. Um what uh, you demonstrated a few uh, you know, slides from uh, CBCT, what uh, system and software are you, are you using? Um, I, I, you know, there's a lot of really good stuff out there. I use the Vatec system. Um, Vatec is, I think is the best. Um, it has different fields of view. It has different um, uh, um, exposure rates. Uh, we can take bite wings with it. It's, it's FDA approved for uh, pedodontic use. Um, they make their own components. Um, they have a really great uh, education program and support system. And what I, what I like really about it is um, they set a contract with you. And when it's time to to um, upgrade, um, th they will buy it back from you at a preset price, so you don't have to put put your instruments on eBay. Okay. Um, 
so for the Amplify courses, are there ones that are specifically related towards implant placement? Um, yes. Dr. Nazarian, who, who is just a phenomenal instructor, um, has a course through Golden Dent, um, hands-on program. Absolutely. Okay. Outstanding, outstanding clinician. Uh, someone had a question about using uh, Veterans GI Bill benefits as payment for the courses. I'm going to forward that along to, to Kurt Adam just to, to have him uh, to you know, answer that specifically. Okay, so here's another question. Uh, the posterior implants you place, you place the plug in the anterior you use allograft. I believe one of the posterior sites had an ob obliterated buckle plate and you still use the plug. For the anterior, if you don't plan on immediate placement, could you have used an osteogen plug and call it good? <laughs> yeah, uh, again, um, my rule is five millimeters or less. I will use an osteogen plug routinely without a membrane. Greater than five millimeters, I will use an allograft with a membrane. We are currently doing research. I, we have sheets and I'm using the osteogen as a membrane. That's not what I really wanted to teach here today. Uh, I, I really want, you know, I said twice in the program, we can grow bone 100% of the time. And I just wanted to teach, I don't want to stretch your abilities. Let's, let's master growing bone in certain situations. But it's a, it's a great comment, um, but those are pretty much my rules. Pretty routine. Okay. What about if you are using an osteogen plug uh, with missing walls? Are you are you using a resorbable membrane with that, or do you need to use like yeah, a particular bone for that? You 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 can you can protect it with a membrane, a, a resorbable membrane, uh, and that's fine too. Absolutely. Okay. Do you use a collagen membrane with osteogen plug if you're missing, say, half of the buckle plate? I would prefer, I personally, I will, I will use the allograft with a membrane if, if I'm missing um, more than five millimeters. Okay. What about for people who um, don't have a cone beam, they're doing 2D surgery, they don't have a guide, how do you know how far you can apically position the, you know, the osteotomy and the implant? Um, you, you won't. Um, you know, <laughs> uh, you know I, we don't block. You know, we we infiltrate. Bone is not innervated, so obviously the patient can tell you. You can you can uh, reflect. You can actually see the available bone. Um, you can take two dimensional digital radiographs. Um, use the apices of our of the adjacent teeth as a guide. Don't go any longer than the the apices of the adjacent teeth. You know, I like to say, you know, in in, in today's environment, you, you you need CBCT when you need it. You know, uh, and if you're not sure have it done. You don't have to have it in your office. There, there are a lot of offices that will hap, be happy to take your patients and do a CT. There's mobile units that will, will allow you to do that. So, um, you know, the cost of these machines have really come down uh, considerably. Um, you know, it's not a tremendous in investment. If, you, if you're really going to jump in with both feet, it's probably wise to have that in your, in your practice, in your, your toolbox. So you use a CBCT for every implant case? You know what? I'm going to say I will take a CBCT like we used to take panoramics, and I may not use it to establish guide or to to uh, um, to virtually place the implant, but I will use it to measure so I know what size of implant that I need to place. And you know, and and we, you know, we train. You can always um, take a post-operative CBCT too to make sure you're in ideal position. Right. Think tooth first. I guess that's the thing. Is is the the surgery is not the hard part of this. It's it's placing the implant so that the tooth looks like a tooth. Yeah, yeah. A lot of my previous restoring dentists would make sure I knew <laughs> that point. <laughs> it didn't make a difference how how great I thought I was in getting that implant in there if it was uh, on a forty five degree angle. It wasn't helping them too much. Right. Um, I think you'd already answered this, but I'll, I'll ask you. So instead of using allograft, which is hard to handle, could you use the membrane with the plug? Yes. Okay. Well, shockingly, we got to all the questions. That's awesome. that may be a first. You know, and Lauren, I'm looking at you know everybody. Everybody stayed, so I'm very very appreciative um, of the. Uh, this is important stuff to learn. This is not not the end all, but just the beginning of the rest of your life. So I appreciate the opportunity. Sure. So I'll let you uh, give us some parting thoughts and uh, then we'll close it out for the evening. Well, you know, as I, as I said earlier, I, I think that, you know, um, uh, we're going through some transitions, you know, post-COVID. 
Um, you know, we were busy there for a while and, and the economy is changing. And I think um, the, the best investment everybody here um, can make is in their education and developing skills. Your, your patients want this work. Uh, if you're taking teeth out, you have to learn how to graft. If you're going to learn how to graft, you have to learn how to manage tissue. And if you're going to learn how to manage tissue, you have to learn how to suture. And if you've gotten that far, you know, placing the implant and understanding tooth position, we can train you to do that. Well, the good news is that all the things you talked about have all been previous webinars that we've done. So I would encourage people um, to, I, I think uh, Golden Dental has it right on their website. I know for sure they have a YouTube channel that you can uh, watch some of those well, old webinars as well. They put my name, it'll be on there too, so. Perfect, okay, yeah. So, you know, like you said, this is a, this is a multi, you know, multi, directional, multifunctional type of process, and uh, there's a lot that goes into it. And that's why I think it's such great that we've done uh, so many different webinars on the various parts of this. So I want to thank uh, Dr. Kaczynski for joining us. Uh, his webinars are always the best attended of all the ones that I do. We always get 800, 1,000, 1,200 people that, that show up, uh, and everyone, like he said, everyone stays. Uh, I want to thank uh, Kurt and Golden Dent for, for their ongoing commitment to dental education and doing these webinars and bringing in these great speakers. I would highly encourage you to take advantage of that special. When he says it's good for 24 hours, that means don't call them on Thursday expecting to get the, the special because uh, it's gone. It, it is a short-term special. But as Kurt said, they offer a full uh, you know, money back guarantee on, on everything that they that they sell. So uh, you don't have to worry that uh, you know, you're know you gonna be stuck with something you're not happy with. Um, the uh, final thing as a final reminder to, to everyone is that the webinar was recorded. The recording will go out in the next day or two. Uh, Golden Dent will send that out. They will also handle the CE forms. There's nothing you need to do. When you log out, you're done. You're not gonna see a screen that takes you to any type of registration page and there's no quiz or test or anything like that. I send the list to Golden Dent. They'll see when you logged on, when you logged off, as long as you were here for you know most of the webinar. I don't know what the number is that they use. I think it's like 80% or 85%, but whatever it is, uh, as long as you were here for the most of it, then you will get that CE form. Check your spam folders, check your junk folder because sometimes it ends up in there. Uh, but that takes a little bit longer, usually around a week or so. So if you don't have it, say in a week or so, and you've checked your junk folder, by all means, feel free to shoot me an email. I'll be more than happy to follow up with a Golden Dent and make sure you get your CE forms. So uh, thank you all for joining. We know that your time is valuable. Uh, we do these webinars on a regular basis. Uh, I think the next one is, I think, I can't remember. I think it's either May or June, but Kurt and I have a few more planned uh, for this year. So we'll make sure everyone that's here tonight will be sent an invitation for the, the next webinars as well. Please stay safe and healthy out there. Uh, and we look forward to seeing all of you on our future webinars. Good night, everyone. Good night, Lauren. Thank you. Hi, Tim.